With an interview with Jason Speller, and Jason, well, you're, you're with two entities really. You got Barrel That's Block, correct. which we see an example of here on the table, but you're also a firearms instructor, right? Right. Draw School, correct. Is the name of your business, yes. and which I think is really clever, by the way. Uh, and so we're, we're honored to have you. Well, thank um, you for having me. Yeah, it's so gonna be great. Tell us a little bit. I mean, just because people like gadgets and gizmos and all of that, we got the Barrel Block. What was the idea behind the barrel block? Uh, what do we have here? Where, pe where can people find it? Yeah, actually this product was born out of necessity. So when we were developing the draw school law enforcement curriculum, we needed the ability to be able to work with students in a classroom setting with their duty issued firearm and to make sure that that firearm would actually function the same way that it would out in the street. Because if we were teaching them one way in the classroom and then we were doing something different on the range, we were inducing training scars. And we did not want that to happen uh, with our students and with our curriculum. We actually uh, conducted a worldwide search to see if there was a tool out there uh, that we could then pull in and actually use for our class, uh, but there wasn't one. And so there were a lot of uh, different types of uh, devices that you can either slide into the barrel or you can replace it with a training type barrel. But the key was is that every time that you use those products, when you rack the slide on an empty magazine, what would happen? Lock slide back. Lock. The slide locks to the rear. Yeah. Now we've induced the training scar because now we have to drop that slide to get that firearm back into battery so that they can get it back in onto target. Well, it doesn't, it, that's not the way that it happens on the range, and that's not the way that it happens in the real world. The other thing that we didn't want to do is, is we didn't want to have to take this, the, the firearm apart in order to utilize the product. So the first thing that we did was is we made this to where it actually pops out of the firearm and it goes into the firearm through the open ejection port. So we don't have to take anything apart. We just slide it right in and it goes right into the chamber and then it's locked into place. This is locked, blocked. It's safe. You can't get anything to, to chamber in here. And you have the safety tip sticking out of the muzzle so that you now know it's safe. So for me as an instructor, it's important for me to know that that firearm in a training classroom environment is safe. It's, yeah. a, it's visual, easy to see down a firing line. You Absolutely. You can see visually all of them, that orange tip sticking out. Absolutely. Yeah. So that took care of having to take the firearm apart. We know that the firearm is safe. So the second thing that we had to develop was the uh, device that we call uh, MagBlock. Now, MagBlock is a small uh, bullet-shaped device. It goes into the top of the magazine, just like a regular round would. But what this device does is it allows the slide to function in a way that it tricks the, the firearm into thinking that it actually has ammunition in it. Right. right. So now what's going to happen is, is the slide is going to function without slide lock unless I manually lock it to the rear. Yep. Right. That means that I can go through all of my mag change drills. I can go through any type of malfunction drill. I can do all of my dry fire drills, and this gun is going to operate mechanically the same way that it would on the range or in the real world with live ammunition in it. Right. So what this effectively does, whether we're using rifles or handguns, it effectively duplicates the function of the firearm in a training environment where we're inducing zero training scars. So that way, no matter whether we're, we're, we're training in a classroom, on the range, whatever they experience out in the real world, in the field, on the street, is going to be what they have already trained to do, which makes the intuitive process of them working through mag changes or malfunctions and things like that, that much quicker. Yeah, it makes great sense to me. I, I love the simplicity too, right? It's one thing to say, because we see this every once in a while, right? We see companies that come out with a product that's like, hey, this is the next awesomest thing. It does all these cool things. You're like, oh, it's exciting. But then you realize, I gotta take the slide apart. I gotta pull the barrel right. apart. I gotta change the trigger, you know, assembly. Like it's like, well, how awesome is this product if I right. have to basically swap out half the parts of my gun? Exactly. And this is just so. It's like, drop this through the 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 the, the, eject, the extraction chamber, right? right. Pull, yeah. Drop your mag, slide this in. Your game on. Right. And the other reason why we developed this too is not only because of the simplicity. But chiefs, uh, police chiefs, did not want us having their officers dismantling their firearm for training while they were on duty. Oh, sure. So you literally can, can go from a, a loaded firearm to a safe training firearm back to a loaded firearm in just a matter of a few seconds. Uh, but when this thing is safe, it is safe, and it is, it is incapable of chambering around. And that, that's an important mm -hmm. distinction. Because if you're yeah. watching this, you're thinking, well, 
wouldn't the wouldn't the bullet just push that thing out? It's like no no no, the bullet can't actually go up the feed ramp and into the chamber. That's it won't, exactly it right. Won't chamber around to begin with. Right. And the way that it's shaped, the harder you push on it, the more it gets wedged into the chamber. Right. So it actually gets it stronger. Yeah. And it all it does it all without changing the the, the weight or the balance of the firearm. So uh, you know. It, However an officer or a civilian has their firearm configured, you're not changing any configuration. You're not swapping anything out. Mm -hmm. You're simply sliding these two devices into your firearm, you're training, and when you're done, take them out and go right back to a hot-loaded sure. firearm. Now, it's, yeah. it's worth noting, too, that these are chamber-specific, I assume, Jason? They're caliber-specific. Uh, what, what did I just say? Chamber-specific. I'm, I'm, I'm a genius. <laughs> They're caliber-specific. <laughs> that is correct. Same uh, product with a 380 as you would with a 9mm. So... Or is it For a instance, bit? if you or if you're running a barrel block nine, which goes into a nine millimeter, you can run it in a, a Glock, you can run it in a, a, a Glock nine, a Smith and Wesson nine, a Sig nine. Sure. It doesn't matter. It's universal by caliber, right? And each caliber is a different color, so that you can't mix and match them and screw something up. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah. Ah, I didn't realize that actually, because I've only seen the nine millimeter one uh, right. example. Example. So that's actually really a good idea because uh, then you're. Like you said, you're not mixing something up. Accidentally throw a nine millimeter one into a 45. Into a 40, right, right. It's going to fall right through. Right. right. And then you run the risk of potentially being able to chamber something in, in, into or right. into the firearm, and right. then you've got a mess on your yeah, hands. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good, good it's thinking clever. there, man. We we were talking offline. It was kind of we had a little bit of a joke. because so we were talking about how the barrel block solves like half of the problems. We stick the Glock E trainer on here, and we solve the remaining <laughs> exactly. trigger problems. Yeah, so exactly. We'll have to, we'll have to play with that like later. Sounds like a match made in heaven. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so so Jason, you, you developed this out of necessity because right. you're obviously a trainer. That's that's what we were doing full time. So talk a little bit about your training business and some of the core philosophies that, that guide you guys' training. Right. So the, the National Law Enforcement Draw School Firearms Training Program is a law enforcement only program. Uh, we actually partner with law enforcement agencies around the country. Uh, they'll come in and they'll host us for either a five day or an eight day class. Uh, and what we'll do is, is we'll go in and then we'll draw regionally from all of those law enforcement uh, departments in that region. So, for right. instance, in May, we're going to be in San Diego for the second year running. Uh, and we'll pull officers from all the way up as, as north as the, the Bay Area. So we've got folks coming down from the San Francisco Bay Area all the way down to San Francisco or down to San Diego, rather. Uh, they'll spend eight days with us. Uh, we'll train them, we'll teach them advanced level instructor uh, techniques using the draw curriculum, which is based on making sure that you're understanding the relationship between the body and the brain, and then you're functioning biomechanically the way that the brain is going to fire signals in a high stress situation. We actually developed this program with extensive help from U.S. Olympic doctors and athletic trainers. Mm. So we asked them, we said, you know, how does an athlete perform all of these amazing feats in high stress situations where they're out of breath, they just ran down a football field, or they've run all the way to the back of the baseball field, uh, their heart rate is up, they're, they're suffering a lot of the same physiological effects, negative effects uh, of, of high heart rate and uh, losing visual acuity and, 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 and their ability to hear things. If the athletes can do all of that, and perform both gross and fine motor functions in a high stress situation to make that one play that wins the game. If they can do that, then why can't we teach police officers to do the same thing? Yeah. That was our question. And they said, you know what, we can help you with this. Mm -hmm. But interestingly, guess what the first thing that they did was? Mm -hmm. They took the gun completely out of the picture. Mm -hmm. They said, we don't want to know what the gun does just yet. We need, you, we need to know what does the body need to do in these high stress situations. So we worked from the ground up on positioning with the body from starting with stance all the way through how we interface with the firearm to make sure that when that trigger is pulled, even though you're not looking at the sights in most mm. cases, that we know where that round is going to go because that's the way we've programmed the, the, the brain to aim that firearm in a training environment. Mm. Yeah, based on the physiology. Absolutely. So very quickly, uh, just like they train athletes, very quickly we were able to develop this uh, curriculum so that officers literally are able to learn something new and within the course of just a couple of hours, it becomes instinctive. In other words, we can go from the classroom out to the range and as soon as we um, uh, give them the, 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 either the verbal or the visual stimulus to, to kick into action, they literally can come out of their holes to be on target with a round down range from the point of recognition in about mm. 0.7, 0.8 seconds. So wow. it's extremely fast. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. That's pretty so good. So it, it's, it's a tremendous program. Um, it, it's very popular right now. The law enforcement uh, community is really recognizing that what they've been doing for the last 30, 40 years has got to change. Uh, and this program really has met the demand of that. Not just teaching them how to shoot, but teaching them how to shoot uh, from different points of elevation, how to shoot in incapacitated positions. Uh, when they go through this course, they have to learn every function of this firearm with both their primary and secondary hand together and then independently of each other. Mm -hmm. uh, so they can draw, shoot everything with mm -hmm. their secondary hand. They can clear malfunctions, and they can do it at extremely fast speeds because we're able to use a, a product like Barrel Block in the classroom. We get it down pat, then we take them out, on the, uh, out onto the range, and now they're doing it live fire. Yeah. They've already shown us that they can do it safely and correctly in the classroom. It's a whole nother level of training when we get them out there on the range, and now they're able to actually perform those functions live fire. Sure. So I have a gut feeling that a lot of people who are watching right now are thinking, so I'm not a cop. Um, how do I get on on this? <laughs> right? I'm sure you get that question all the time. Well, I, I, I don't see um, Tim out in the audience, and I, and I hope <laughs> I don't misspeak. Uh, we've had the opportunity to, to talk with and to work with members of the USCCA training division, and, and we're hoping that we can uh, sometime in the near future perhaps uh, actually develop a civilian model of this program uh, so that USCCA members and others can take advantage of this level of training. Not just the training, but the level of understanding. Because when you understand what your body's going to do, you now can act physically in line with what it's going to do naturally. And, that, and that's what we like to teach. Yeah. So yeah. don't quote him on it, but it might Not be yet. coming. Not might yet. be coming. Wow. Oh, that's cool. Yep. Uh, you know, there's so many, so many things that you said that align with my vision uh, as far as... Uh, what, my, my beliefs, you know, where it comes to training, uh, handling a firearm, so forth. Um, do you have, have you seen any sort of measurable results based on, you know, from your experience in going around, traveling, teaching uh, law enforcement officers across the country? What sort of results have you seen? Uh, three come to mind specifically. There was two different instances. One was a single officer. One was two officers. So we've actually had OIS saves out in the field after those officers have gone through our training. Mm. That's a very humbling and a very sobering phone call to receive mm. uh, from uh, a member of a law enforcement agency when they say, hey, our guys were involved in a shooting. Now, initially, when they say that, your heart sinks because you don't know what's coming next. Yep. And then when they say, hey, they're still with us because of what you taught them, that's a very, very humbling uh, a phone call to receive. Mm. Uh, so we expect to see those kinds of, of phone calls and those kinds of, of accolades continue to grow in the coming months and years. Uh, it's already happened a, a couple of times. Uh, but when you get to talk to the, those guys and debrief them and hear about what they went through and for them to say, I'm standing here today because of the training that we received from you and because of the fact that we, even though we, in, in one particular case, two, two SWAT officers were actually ambushed. And, mm. But because they were ambushed, even though they were behind the eight ball, their speed of recognition and their reaction time was so fast that before the, the individual, the subject could actually fire upon them, they were able to engage him instead. Mm. Uh, had, had that not been there, uh, they, they told me that one or both of them probably would not be with us today. That's mm. amazing. Uh, Jason, give us uh, just an example of, of something that you know, the body inherently does a certain way, and we're always fighting it, trying to sure. make it do something else. Give us an example. Absolutely. So let's look um, at the holy grail of firearms training, if you will. If you look at the seven fundamentals of firearms marksmanship, Right. Uh, now, we raised a lot of eyebrows, and, and we made a few people upset when we started teaching this, but the, the seven fundamentals of firearms marksmanship teaches what first? Think about that. It starts with uh, stance. Well, actually, it starts with right. grip. Or grip? Yeah. If, if you look oh. in most of the manuals. I've always thought of it in, in yep. terms of stance. It, it actually starts with grip, and then in stance is typically second. Hmm. Okay. But when you're in a high-stress situation and your body knows that it needs to defend itself, guess what the first thing it's going to go into is? It's going to start positioning itself from a stance standpoint. Sure. So if you're trying to get your firearm on or your hand on the firearm first and then get in the stance second, you're actually doing two very basic functions in, in opposite of what the brain is trying to do. So what do you think that does to your performance advantage? It drops it. It kills yeah. your performance advantage. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons why when we teach this course, we spend the entire first section on nothing but stance. 
and making sure that you can quickly and in a balanced manner get down into the correct stance, position your body to be able to function your firearm and manage recoil effectively. Mm. Uh, and then after we work on stance, then only then do we go into grip. Mm. And then we don't teach grip, we teach draw sequence. Grip is just one of four sets of things that have to happen in order for you to get the gun out of the holster and on the target. So that's why we yeah. refer to that as the draw sequence. Right. As opposed um, to grip. As, as opposed draw. to grip. And especially when you're working with folks that are wearing either level two or level three holsters, obviously most police officers are wearing a level three holster. There's four separate things that have to happen simultaneously to get that yep. firearm out of the holster and, and moving toward the target. Sure. Yeah. Sure. That's a great example. I love what you said there because it makes total sense, right? Start a response, body starts to move right. all, immediately. I can't stop that. But inherently, the way I'm training myself is, no, first grip, then stance. Right. And mm. it's just completely backwards. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it, well, you know, it's interesting because, like I said, I, I always thought of stance as being first. Right. I guess I didn't. You know, Pat it, on the back yeah. for Riley. Absolutely. Well, no. Pat on the back for <laughs> Riley. Good I'm job, Riley. I'm not saying it like that. I'm yeah. just saying, like, th it's true that uh, we've probably, you know, many people have probably been thinking of things and doing things a little bit backwards. Uh, I, I don't know where that came from for me personally, but that just... You know, so obviously I, I kind of took the wind out of your sails because that's, okay. that's where you're trying to go. But, you know, I'm glad that that sort of thing is recognized and that uh, we've got quality training, you know, being put out there um, that's making a difference in the lives of officers and, and hopefully others uh, soon as well. So um, what's next for you, man? Like, I mean, we've touched on maybe a little bit of that. Uh, in, in, I mean, you've obviously had some uh, innovative, creative uh, things uh, from Barrel Block, uh, but... Uh, you know, you got anything else in the works? You, you know, yeah. and not that you have to give all away all the secrets, but well, in, in terms of barrel block, we have the ability to really be able to run any caliber we want. Uh, obviously, we're going to allow demand to to drive that. So uh, last Christmas, we released the the uh, 380 auto for the smaller uh, semi-automatic pistols. Uh, the 308 for the rifles is in the works, uh, so that'll be coming out a little bit further down the road. Mm. And again, that's going to be driven by demand. On the training side of things right now, with what we're seeing happening in the world and a lot of these malicious attacks on police officers who are out there protecting our communities and just trying to do their job, our goal is to get this vital life-saving training into the hands of as many officers as we possibly can as quickly as we can. So what we're doing right now is just continuing to build out every week our instructor cadre across the country of certified uh, national law enforcement draw school uh, firearms instructors so that they can then go back to their departments, train their officers. Because it, it's one thing for me to know this training or for you to know it or for even the instructors at the academies to know this information. Yeah. It's a whole other thing for that patrol officer out there on the street to know uh, and understand this training and have the ability to perform physically to a much, much higher level uh, while still being able to maintain a tremendous amount of focus on that target. So they can make split-second life-saving decisions right. as to whether or not they're going to um, uh, you know, pull that trigger, whether their gun is even going to come out of the holster. Uh, we, we all know that action beats reaction. So even before the gun comes out of the holster, very quick physical movements can change the mind of the person who might be thinking about attacking that officer because they can see that immediately they're already at a disadvantage. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And it, t tell people a little bit, Jason, where they can find you, where they can learn about the products. If they, if so someone's watching, maybe is in law enforcement or knows someone's yeah. in law enforcement, where, sure. where do they find all this stuff? So Barrel Block is available online. It's also available this weekend here at the USCCA Expo. Uh, we're in booth number 249. Uh, but if they go to Block Safety, and that's B-L-O-K. No C, people. There's no C. B-L-O-K Safety. So BlockSafety.com. Uh, as a matter of fact, this weekend... Uh, Expo floor pricing is available online. <laughs> so the pistol models are $10. Mm. The rifle models are $15. Uh, and uh, that will be uh, good through Sunday. Uh, so you can order. And we've got training videos on there. We show you how to set up your malfunctions, all of your reloading drills, all of your dry fire drills. It's all mm. on there. Super simple. We really want folks to get the most training benefit out of this product, which is why we put those videos on there. Uh, on the law enforcement side, if you go to Draw Training, and that's D-R-A-W, Draw Training, uh, drawtraining.com, that is our law enforcement training website. Uh, you can go in there. You can read about our programs. You also can uh, click on the Instructor tab, and you can see where our instructor schools are being held around the country. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. For sure. So 
check those out. Uh, make sure you check out both those websites. Uh, I've been very impressed, pretty impressed with with the block, the barrel block. I think it's a really cool product. Thank you. I'm excited to, uh, you know, kind of integrate it into all that other dry fire training. Greg, sure. dry fire is about having lots of different tools, uh, so you can you know train as many of those elements as you can. Right. So I'm really excited about the product. I love the things you guys are doing with draw. Uh, I, I'm just jealous mostly. <laughs> Riley here has a badge. Yep. Uh, so yeah, maybe he can get in on the phone, but, <laughs> but uh, now I have to figure out what I'm going to do. But uh, awesome. We really appreciate it, Jason. Thanks so much for being here and Absolutely. being part of the expo this yeah. year. Thank you for having us. It's been an honor, and uh, we look forward to working with you guys yeah. on, on other endeavors in the future. Absolutely. Thanks All right, so guys. Much.